All you need to do is be 21 and over and have a high school diploma. We bring you in for six weeks and we teach you how to table game and we pay you while we do that. Hmm. And then if you are successful in passing the classes, we provide you with a career opportunity. Hmm. Uh, being a table games dealer, hmm. some people work part time and earn thirty to sixty thousand dollars part time. Really? So if you're a young person, 21 and over, and you are friendly, going, can count. <laughs> can count. Right. And, and pay want a new career. <laughs> right. It's a great career opportunity, wow. either full time or part time, because we're open 24 hey, 7. Y'all get benefits with that? Yes. Really? 24 7. We're there. So you pick your, the schedule. You'll start off on mm -hmm. nights mm -hmm. just because that's the way it is. Right. But you can grow there and you can create a life for yourself that you wouldn't have dreamed of with a high school diploma. Wow. Hey, what's up, everybody? Do you know anything about equity and inclusion or sports betting? That's what's happening here in Cleveland right now. And today we're going to talk a little bit about equity and inclusion and sports betting. And if that's something you think you'll be interested in, I want you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well. And tune in to hear a little bit more about equity, inclusion and sports betting in Ohio and how it may affect you. You tuned in to another episode of Strategic Moves. I'm your host, Ken Dow. This is a place where I bring art, culture, politics and business all together in one place. And I do it every Sunday right here in the studio. And today I have a very special guest. Who she's going to talk to us today about equity and inclusion and sports betting. We are allowed to bet on sports here in Ohio, and she is the person over at Jack's Entertainment, and she is the vice president of equity and inclusion for Jack's Entertainment. Her name is Catherine Hall. Everybody, welcome Catherine Hall to our show. That's our millions and millions of people out there who loves to see and watch <laughs> our show every week. Today, we have you into our office. Ms. Hall is going to talk to us about equity and inclusion. What does that mean? As well as what Jack's Entertainment means to Ohio. So we want to first thank you for being a guest on our show. It's my pleasure to be here with you. All right. So we're going to talk to you. But, you know, in all fairness to my city, we got to find out who you are before we get to where you've been and all of that. So tell us a little bit about who are you and you from Cleveland? You're you got sent in here. Or how did you get here? <laughs> well, I am homegrown, born and raised, always lived in Cleveland. OK. I live currently in the same neighborhood I grew up in by choice. And what neighborhood is that? I live on uh, East Boulevard in the Glenville neighborhood. There it is again. Around the corner there it is from again. where I grew up. You know, Glenville is probably one of the most popular communities in Cleveland so far, even though the football team just won a state championship as well, which makes us I'm number one. But, the, proud. you know, I'm everybody's proud of that. I'm a John graduate, but yeah, I'm proud know, of Glenville. You got to be proud of Glenville. It was CMSD. Yeah, yeah you, you have to be proud of CMSD, absolutely. right? So you grew up in Glenville on East Boulevard. So that's where you always lived? I grew up off of Superior. Okay. But I recently, in the last five years, moved to East Boulevard. So where in Superior you grew up at? Off 113th. Oh, okay. Across the street, almost from uh, Von Conwell. <laughs> She's on one side of Superior. Right. And we were on the other side. So you went to John Hay? Yeah. So you're a graduate of John Hay? I'm proud graduate. Oh, okay. CMSD. CMSD. You go to school with anybody that we might know? A lot of people that you might know. Uh, mm -hmm. My next door neighbor, we called him Binky. Oh, he is with the old days now. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's right. That's right. That's right. When you said the name, I said I've never heard that name before. Okay, all right. Yeah. So he was with the old days. Yeah, he is with. He's with the old days. That's great. That's great. I was fortunate. To, I'm uh, the oldest of three. Okay. My sister passed away a few, several years ago. Okay. But my brother and he owns his own company, More mm -hmm. Promotions, and he's in South Euclid. Hmm. I have no biological children, but everybody's children. Oh, I'm oh you that, you that, that auntie. I'm that auntie of the village who <laughs> right. okay. uh, loves to invest in the children mm -hmm. and be an example. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons I moved back to the city of Cleveland. I mm -hmm. thought it was important for kids mm -hmm. to see me as a neighbor okay. and also to access the things I could provide to them mm -hmm. in terms of exposure. I think that's why we say we need a village mm -hmm. because children need to see certain things. They need to see what they can be. They need to be able to touch people mm -hmm. and they be able to communicate with individuals and know that they could become anything they really want to be because others have done it that look like them beforehand. 
Did you grow up with your mom and dad? Or? So mom and dad till I was 13. Mm -hmm. And then they were divorced. Okay. But we were very fortunate. I thank them throughout my years. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to choose and count on less than one hand all mm -hmm. the holidays we did not spend together. Mm -hmm. So while they found it better to be apart, they still we, were together. They raised us mm -hmm. parents. It, we could go to my dad's house anytime we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like I said, all the holidays. And then as they both became seniors, my mom is 97. Wow. He passed away at 80. But okay. they were closer as non-married friends wow. and took care of each other all the time. Wow. Um, he would ask me, if your mom needs something, let me know. Mm -hmm. And one time he had to have open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. And we looked around the hospital room. I looked at him. I said, you are going to have to be calm down and be nice and you are going to have to not take it personal because the three of us that's all there is right for the next six weeks of this recovery mm -hmm. this is what we have got you and it was beautiful excellent was beautiful. excellent so you moved on to college or you did i graduated john hay a year early whoa and then i went to baldwin wallace so you ended up graduating a year early yeah Oh, so you had your stuff I had together. Points. You had the points. Okay. <laughs> I was out of there. <laughs> you say, "Oh, I got you." one of those. No, <laughs> no. And what I mean by that, there was a guy kids who went to school also who had the points because back then, as you get the points, you had I'm enough. Was you, gone. you was gone, right? I, I hear you on that. Okay. And the irony of it is mm -hmm. that when I went to Baldwin Wallace mm -hmm. College, mm -hmm. uh, my dad graduated from Baldwin Wallace. Okay. He and George Forbes mm -hmm. classmates. Wow. Wow. And so I graduated same college he did. And the president at the time mm -hmm. was still the president when I went. A.B. Wow. Bonds. Wow. A.B. Bonds. OK. OK. And so Barbara Wallace, that's where you got your degree. My first. Degree. Your first day. What was your first degree? It, it is was political science. Political and science. Pre-law. Oh. And a minor in sociology. In sociology. I saw that. And then you got another degree. You got your master's in diversity and inclusion. That's what I saw. Exactly. From Cleveland State. So uh, at BW, they used to have a program that was called Upper Bound. Mm -hmm. I think that BW was sponsoring that. Are you part of that or is that no. program wasn't there then? It was there, but I just, I wasn't part of it. Okay. I was just a mission. Mm -hmm. uh, first time living away from home. Oh, so um, you actually lived on campus out yeah. there and everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Oh. I was gone. But, but the <laughs> funny part of it was... Because I had never been away from home, mm -hmm. I was exposed to some young people doing some crazy things. Yeah. And so it wasn't uncommon for me to call home every day and say, mm -hmm. Mom, they're doing this. Mom, right, they're right. doing that. She said, if you call me again because you went out here a year early, maybe you need to come <laughs> home for a year and wow. then send you back. Mm -hmm. So I stopped calling. You stopped calling and just got it together. She said, well, uh. Said I wasn't afraid or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just odd the things that they were doing. doing. I wasn't accustomed mm -hmm. to that. So let's talk about that out there. What was it like the equity and inclusion of BW back in those days? So when I was going, Ed was really upset that I chose Baldwin Wallace because he remembered previous years and how he was treated there. So, so we gotta go back then. Now you gotta take me back because now I've got to be nosy. I gotta get all of your business. So what's your dad do? He was a school teacher initially. Oh, okay. And then he went on to be a social worker in the criminal justice system. Okay. And what your mom and do? And my mom was in dietary at Cleveland Clinic. Okay. Once she raised us mm -hmm. and we got grown, she went back to school and took up dietitian. Mm -hmm. and, became, and she ultimately went to Cleveland Clinic and retired from there. Oh, okay. So my dad liked education, but he was a sports nut. Okay. And so he was a teacher, a counselor, as a, a high school basketball coach. Oh, okay. Okay. So always loved children, always loved, you know, sports arena. My sister, brother, and I, sports fanatic. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's cool. That's cool. That's real cool. And that's why when you was telling me that and you said things hadn't changed much since he was there, that's what made me think like, okay. It changed a lot, but there was some of the same issues there. Mm -hmm. and I became really active in the Black Student Alliance. Okay. And when I went to Baldwin Wallace, I made the conscious decision I was not going to have a black roommate. Mm. I had a multicultural family. Mm -hmm. I had white cousins and mm -hmm. aunts. But I made the decision when I went there that I was not going to have a black roommate. Mm -hmm. I needed to learn how to interact more who didn't look like me. Okay. Little did I know, I guess I was paving the way mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. being a diversity professional. 
And it's really interesting because we learned a lot from each other. When you live with somebody, you right. learn a lot. Right. You're able to ask those questions mm-hmm. and uh, candid answers. Mm-hmm. I always tell young people, college is where you really learn and grow as a person. Gotcha. Right. So, you know, that's a good analogy of You can it. make your mistakes there mm-hmm. without it being held over. Head over. And, and that's the difference because most of the guys who come out of college, when they come work for me, I'd be like, you know, the professors in college, they don't understand what it is to be a businessman out here. And so I was in the real world versus college. But I always tell them, I said, what college does for you, though, it was, I didn't take that path. I just went straight into business. But I tell my kids, even my youngest, my oldest daughter who came back from college, what well, I noticed that college really taught her a lot that it took me years to understand is to kind of get organized a little bit, organize your thoughts, organize how you work. And like you say, build yourself up that way. We kind of just work to keep, keep things going. And sometimes it's hard. So I like what you just said about that. Cause I think it does. It helps you as a person. Cause she grew as a person. And everything. So yeah, I think college my dad does that. was a college graduate with a master's degree. Mm-hmm. My mom could have went to college. She had mm-hmm. an aunt that wanted to send her, but that wasn't her path. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, Growing up in that household, too, I learned early on that anybody, regardless of education, has something to teach you if you're smart enough to listen and mm-hmm. pay attention. Mm-hmm. So what made you decide to expand into getting into your master's degree into uh, equity and inclusion? So I was really fortunate. I worked at Cleveland State for a couple of years. Then I uh, went on to be the first diversity officer at Cuyahoga Community College six months after Jerry Sue Thornton went there. Okay. And I was doing the work, successful at it, but I had always wanted to get a master's. If you're working in education, that's the next logical Mm -hmm. step. But I started one in labor relations and I couldn't stand it. Right. Right. And so then Cleveland State created this master's in psychology with the on diversity management. I'm Mm -hmm. like, that's for me. Got you. Best 18 months I ever spent in my life. Really? Best 18 months ever spent in my life for me. Mm -hmm. We actually, it was a learning process because we did it on intensive weekends Mm -hmm. and we had sessions that I likened to therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. So you Mm -hmm. talked about what you had been through as a human being and we learned valuable lessons uh, through that. You were able to, and the classes were diverse Mm -hmm. intentionally. Mm -hmm. And so we had the opportunity to ask white women, what the difference between black women and and white women were. Mm -hmm. We were able to ask persons who were gay, what is it like to be gay? Mm -hmm. An intrigue of mine was what was it really like to be a black man Mm -hmm. and have black men tell you their story. So Mm -hmm. couldn't help but learn. And it was a safe space. So you had the opportunity to just have honest conversations. Sometimes you got your feelings hurt. Sometimes mm-hmm. you didn't. Mm-hmm. But we were always empathetic and respectful mm-hmm. about the discussions that we had. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing to read about the theories. All right. It's exactly. another to live it. Correct. Correct. OK. And so it got me in tune with who I was. Mm-hmm. And we all bring baggage to the table. Correct. You can't be a diversity professional bringing your baggage to the table. Mm-hmm. So that program allowed us to deal with our baggage, our hurts and pains, yeah. put them to the side so mm-hmm. that when you go out and work with other people around diversity and inclusion, you're not tainting the Correct. process. For Correct. Them. You got the empathy. Yes. I understand that. Yeah, that's, that's really good. And you did that at um, Tri-C. And- Tri-C allowed me, they actually helped pay for my master's and allowed me the time to do it. So you did that for a little while and you was doing a little bit of equity and inclusion there, but not really, right? No, at Tri-C, I was hired as the diversity and mm. inclusion. Director. So what does that mean at Tri-C when you're doing that? Tell us a little bit about diversity what they're doing. Diversity and inclusion is all about people. Okay. We know if you look at the United States today versus 10 years ago, very diverse. Okay. The makeup of people, individuals. It just is. Diversity just is. Mm -hmm. Inclusion is creating a respectful place where that diversity can come into your workplace Mm -hmm. and be able to thrive, survive and make suggestions that make your organization better. Interesting. If you look around a room, the diversity exists, even if the races of the people are the same, Mm -hmm. because we didn't grow up, do the same things. We didn't follow the same path. And so we bring our whole selves to work. When you step in the room as a businessman, bring your experience, bring your children, 
Right. You bring your grandchildren, bring the history of your parents, you bring that whole package. If you walk into my workplace and I allow you to be who you are and I encourage you to make suggestions and to offer up different ways of doing business, then we have a diversity of thought. Mm -hmm. Diversity of thought creates creativity and then it creates innovation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So innovation is the place where people thrive and make money. And it just is. So when you talk about diversity, just is. Inclusion part comes in when I welcome you in, Mm -hmm. create a respectful environment for you to thrive in, and then ask you and allow you to to make suggestions that create innovation. Mm -hmm. We, We can have a conversation about a topic. But if you have 10 different people around the table and you allow them all to weigh in on that, then you get a different solution versus just asking the people that look like you for the solution. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, It's very interesting. So uh, talk to me about how you apply that to working with Jack's Entertainment. I am in heaven at Jack Entertainment. Mm -hmm. I have been there now two years. Mm -hmm. It is by far the most diverse place I have ever worked in my life. Mm. I tell them all the time when I have the privilege of speaking with my team members, this is diversity geeks paradise. Mm -hmm. We have individual from every persuasion working there. Mm -hmm. You can think of as we have people with blue hair, green hair, senior citizens, people who have transitioned, different ethnicities, different age groups. It's just a salad bowl of a lot of great people. Because you know, it was a point in our time where positions like equity and inclusion and these opportunities or positions were being created in public and private sector as it became, I'm going to use this term, buzzword. OK, that, you know, just like check the box, check the box just like uh, our new one is uh, racism, African-America. What is it? We're going to declare racism as a public okay. health crisis. And getting down to what does that mean and how does that affect and how do we change? Because when your positions like came out and, you know, I was in my group of folks, everybody's OK. That person is there to make sure black folks get opportunities there. That's the misguided. And I'm sure you oh, ain't that, the first no, to ever no, tell no, you that. Absolutely. I'm sure that's yeah. real clear on right. everywhere that I've worked. Mm-hmm. I'm real clear on what diversity is. And, and that's why it was really good. You explained that today. What the definition of diversity yeah. is. All right. Race is one facet of diversity. Correct. Of course, when you talk about equity, there are different things that you have to do to include different groups. Mm -hmm. So what's equity? Even though I got a million fans out there, we all ain't involved and understand stuff. So I want you to break it down. I say equity, it doesn't mean everybody doesn't want the same things, Mm -hmm. but they want access to opportunities that gets them the same thing. Okay. So equity is not about me handing you anything. Mm -hmm. Equity is about being clear on what you are advertising for a job Mm -hmm. and what the requirements are. And then casting that net widely Mm -hmm. so that people know there's an opportunity for which they can apply Mm -hmm. and compete. And then if I am the best candidate for the job and that best doesn't mean what you think it means, it means what you have designated as what you need Mm -hmm. and who brings that package to the table. Mm-hmm. If you're an organization where everyone doing DNI looks like one thing, mm-hmm. and if you have a talented, qualified candidate pool, you had an opportunity to add some diversity there. Mm-hmm. And why would you do that? Because of that innovation and different ways of doing things. Mm-hmm. So we could always say that you move the needle in terms of just the race box, but that's a small facet. Okay. There's many dimensions of diversity. Mm-hmm. It's your gender, it's your race, it's your ethnicity, your sexuality, mm-hmm. and on and on and on. When you look at yourself and you define who you are, all of that are dimensions of diversity. So race mm. is one small facet of what we do. Equity is providing that opportunity for people who want to thrive and grow, mm-hmm. giving them the tools necessary to grow within that organization. And each person needs something different. Different, right, right. So you'll never level the playing field. Mm -hmm. You'll improve the playing field to the point where others want to come and work with you Mm -hmm. and that you provide the same resources to everyone that wants to get ahead. So it's like handing out overtime. Mm -hmm. Are you being intentional about making sure that everyone on the roster gets overtime or are you selective? 
Mm. If you've previously been selective in that way that you dole out things, then you have the opportunity to do better. And that's what that equity piece is. So let's talk about Jack's Entertainment, because I'm calling it Jack's Entertainment here in Cleveland. It's Jack's Casinos downtown. A lot of people know it, but I wanted to respect your title because it's Jack's Entertainment, because I imagine Jack Entertainment, Entertainment, because I imagine you're doing more than the casino then. Right. And so so talk to me, because I I, we when we hear Jack's, we know a casino. But when I kept going through your stuff, I kept seeing the Jack Entertainment. So I say it's bigger than this casino. So talk to me about the Jack Entertainment portion. Absolutely. I tell people drive by Jack. Mm-hmm. And they either tell themselves a story about what goes on there right? or they're gaming and they come in and game on the games that they like and they leave. Mm-hmm. My position is wide range. It touches every facet of Jack. So from the hiring and making sure that we're being inclusive and stretching our net wide mm-hmm. for applicants to know that they are welcome there mm-hmm. and we hire them and promote them with. to supplier diversity. We spend millions of dollars. And as an Ohio gaming company, it's important to us that we spend dollars locally okay, and that we get the best price as well as the best product. Mm-hmm. What makes Jack unique is its innovation. Okay, We also are very intentional about our sponsorship and our community outreach. Mm-hmm as well as uh, being a difference in this community. People may not know we are no longer affiliated with any other casino. We are Ohio-based casino. Mm -hmm. We're born here, raised here. We're no longer affiliated with the Dan Gilbert brand. The owners own Jack outright. They made that decision a couple years ago. So Dan Gilbert's not the owner? No. Really? Now, see, that's some that's some information that I did yeah, not know. We're that. very friendly with the folks over at the Cavs. We work together really? a lot on various things, but we're no longer affiliated with that brand. That's we are interesting. unique to Ohio. We're the only Ohio based casino that is owned and operated in Ohio. Our competitor is out of Vegas. Something's going on over there. I'm trying to change the gaming industry. What's going on? I'm just saying there's something going on in that whole little block over there, you know, just bedrock stuff going on because that stuff is something going on, but that's interesting. Okay. We'll keep, we'll keep our eyes open. Stay tuned. Yeah. A lot of great <laughs> things, but no longer we've separated, but mm-hmm. great things happening in all those yeah. arena by all three teams. Excellent. Excellent. So, so the entertainment portion. Entertainment is we want to be a place where you come and have a good time. Um, it's your gaming. That gaming is just part of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. We, we provide, we don't have a theater in mm-hmm. any of our facilities, but we no, you would love to them. have one, boy. You'll be, <laughs> well, I know you. I'll be tapping my feet. <laughs> oh, God. You'll be there every day and be like, that's her seat right, right over there. there. <laughs> you know me well. Oh, yeah, Life boy. is for living. All right. I know that's right. That's all they need to do is give you a theater. I mean, you'll have everybody here. I wish they would give you a theater. Yeah, lots of concerts. <laughs> Uh, we, we, so what we have done in the entertainment business since I've been there is educate individuals about who Jack is and who okay. Jack isn't. Okay. So just this past year, mm-hmm. we hosted four major receptions there. When the NAACP had their gala, mm-hmm. we hosted the after party at Jack. So where do you host it at? We have a bit. There's lots of room in, in our facility. Yeah. You've got to come over so I can take you to lunch and give you a tour. Yeah, I, I go. You know, we do the basic thing when we go through there. And I tell you the one thing I used to go there. Me and my wife used to like going was to the buffet in the basement. Buffet now, is still up and running and yeah. very excellent. Yes. Now, the buffet is excellent. And we're open on all holidays. Yeah. Really? We're open Wednesday through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Take a day. Come over. I'll treat you to lunch. Excellent. Excellent. And so the reason we have a variety of things there, I may have a spouse that doesn't gamble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can come sit at the bar, have a cocktail or and we do have music from time to time. COVID has Mm -hmm. put a hold on a number of things for us. But New Year's Eve is coming. We open 24 seven. There'll be lots of entertainment entertainment and lots of things to do. This year, sports betting is coming. We're going to get in. We're going to get in because we're going to do a big Ohio State game Uh is New Year's Eve evening. That's right. So don't sports be in by then. 
it starts it at twelve oh one. Wow! On that, January one. Are you 1. kidding me? That is deep. Oh, they that, played us on that one. Yeah. Oh, they played us well, on that. Oh, that Ohio State. I mean, that's a good. That would have. But we're doing some things now. Oh, People cool. can come over to the uh, sports betting area. Mm-hmm. Uh, a wonderful place to watch the game. Mm-hmm. Hang out with your family. They're twenty one and over. Right. 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 <laughs> have a cocktail. Listen to the music. Always playing music. <laughs> no, just hang out. Now, no connection to the race scene at all. Thistledown Racino is our property. We okay. have two property. Jack Entertainment encompasses both Cleveland downtown property as mm-hmm. well as Thistledown Racino. Those are our two properties. The one further out in Northfield has no affiliation with us at all. Oh, the Northfield Park. Well, no, MGM. MGM. Well, you know the now the one out in they can give you a theater in that one. <laughs> <laughs> They got plenty. Now, I know that one well. They got plenty of space in that one. You can have a nice party <laughs> off of that one for sure. So, yeah. so we did the NAACP reception. Mm-hmm. Also, during uh, the All Star Week, we had a Black History Month reception there, okay. and we invited people in. Okay. And we're real intentional about inviting diverse audiences into our facility, and it's uh, known as the Jack Bar okay. on our third floor. So it's mm-hmm. a beautiful space. And people hadn't even been aware of it. We always invite folks in. We tell them who we are. We ask, how many of of you is this your first time being here in the 10 years that we've been here? Mm -hmm. Half the room hand always goes. Wow. So that's part of my job is to tell our story to the community. This is who we are and this is what we do. And this is how we make an impact on the community. So that's important to us. That's very important. I want to talk a little bit about some of the other things that you guys are doing over there at Jack's. How about employment? If you were looking to try to get a job at, how old you would need to be to work there? What type of jobs you guys offer there at Jack's? Any of that? Oh, absolutely. One of the things that uh, we're putting a real big emphasis on, because people are just not aware mm-hmm. of what a great opportunity is, mm-hmm. is our table game school. Mm-hmm. If you are interested in that's right, dealing, it's a whole school. For yeah, that. we're the only gaming facility in Ohio, in this part of Ohio, with mm-hmm. table games. Mm-hmm. The only one, and they're located in our downtown property. Mm-hmm. Horse racing is at our Thistledown Racino property, mm-hmm. so that's the distinction between the two properties. Got gotcha. you, but. What a great career opportunity. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is be 21 and over and have a high school diploma. We bring you in for six weeks and we teach you how to table game and we pay you while we do that. Mm -hmm. And then if you are successful in passing the classes, we provide you with a career opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Being a table games dealer, Mm -hmm. some people work part time and earn thirty to sixty thousand dollars part time. Really? So if you're a young person, 21 and over, and you are friendly, going, can count. <laughs> can count, right. And, and want attention. a new career. <laughs> right. It's a great career opportunity, wow. either full-time or part-time, because we're open 24-7. Hey, y'all get benefits with that? Yes. Really? 24-7. We're there. So you pick your, the schedule. You'll start off on mm-hmm. nights mm-hmm. just because that's the way it is. Right. But you can grow there and you can create a life for yourself that you wouldn't have dreamed of with a high school diploma. Wow. You know, so it's a great career opportunity. And we're working in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland to recruit people for that, in addition to the recruitment that we do. Wow. Because when I first got there, my eyes were wide open. I said, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. People are not aware that mm-hmm. this career exists and you can stay there. The fascinating thing about gaming is you can come in at, at, at entry level. And mm-hmm. if you work hard and put your time in, you can grow within the organization. The other beauty of it is with the gaming license and being a table games dealer, you can take that all over the country. Oh, Relocate. so you can go to Vegas or anywhere with right. that. Wow. Okay. But that's a unique skill that is available to you without a college degree Mm -hmm. and making that kind of money with benefits and steady employment. What other career do you know that can do that? No, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We also have EVS positions. Now what's that? Environmental services. So housekeeping. Okay. We have food service positions available, Mm -hmm. whatever positions you would have in a normal business. Mm -hmm. We have them there. So we have 
degree positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a unique array of different positions available. And like everyone else, we've had our challenges getting people to come to work because mm -hmm. of right. late post COVID. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone has had those challenges, but mm -hmm. um, we've been excited about some of the things we're doing. We just opened a new Starbucks and we oh. hired about 25 people. Really? And what an amazing group of people. Hmm. Just all sorts of kind of so people. You guys never had a Starbucks in there? No, but we have one now. Wow. So are y'all ever thinking about doing some expanding to do some other stuff we, there? We do with the space that we have. You mm -hmm. know, our downtown property is on Public Square. Mm -hmm. um, we recently put in a new poker room. We put in a new indoor smoking patio with state-of-the-art um, mm -hmm facility to take the smoke out of there. Mm -hmm. We just added Starbucks. So with the properties that we have mm -hmm. in that, and of course we put the whole sports betting area there. Correct. At Thistledown, we put in a smoking patio, mm -hmm. but we're always looking and tweaking our restaurants. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do expansion. We were fortunate with regard to the vision mm -hmm. that our owners have and making sure that we improve the properties that we have. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room, that sports betting that's coming here to Cleveland. And as she said, it's going to be the first or you can bet in Ohio on any sports yes. that you want to bet on, right? Yeah. How does that work? So for people who want to get into it, I told you we were innovative. Mm -hmm. We don't like to follow. We like to lead. Okay. So we've already developed an app that they can access now and practice with. You can bet on it, but you can't wager <laughs> okay. on it. You can download the BetJack app. Really? It will teach you how to properly bet. It will also educate and inform you on the lens of sports in Ohio. Ah. In addition to the, the, national you know, stuff. The, you know, the national stuff. Okay. It teaches you that. You can practice on it. Mm -hmm. um, we are focused because we are experts in Ohio. We believe that our local bettors want to be able to have that access. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, when you talk about uh, sports betting, the draft kings, those kind of things, are they different than what you guys are doing? They're at the national level. So their focus will be national. Mm -hmm. Ours is local Ohio sports, which okay. we know Ohio is a big sports. Mm -hmm. Not only is Cleveland a big sports town, Ohio is a big sports state. OK. And so we focus on educating, informing and offering bets on what's going on across Ohio, including okay. Cleveland mm -hmm. uh, at the national level. They market nationally. OK. The reason that Ohio sports betting is important, it's not that on January 1st, people will start to bet. Mm -hmm. People are betting already. OK. When you look at the, the financial state and the involvement of sports betting in the, every state sounding mm -hmm. Ohio is betting. Okay. So our Ohio money is going out of the state. Mm. So this will enable us to compete nationally with so, those. So, yeah. You say you got a whole area y'all done built out for that, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lots of big TVs. stadium, wall of huge TVs. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen so many TVs in my life. Really? All these beautiful stadium seating. Okay. We want you to come in and have a comfortable experience. You okay. know, like fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Michigan game, instead of watching it at home, Mm -hmm. I invited some friends down. We watched the game. We had some refreshments. We grabbed a coffee from Starbucks mm -hmm. at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. We got cocktails later right. on. Right. But what a great experience. And we're yelling. And mm -hmm. then we brought some Michigan fans with us. So oh, okay. they were the entertainment. Oh, right. That was the entertainment. Yeah, although they wouldn't end up winning the game. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, they got the last laugh. Last. Exactly. <laughs> they most certainly did. That's for sure. Oh, that's good. So sports betting would be here. And they say from there, you can bet almost on anything. We go a little more in depth on the things that you can bet on. Hmm. And I'm learning. What I like about being at Jack is I'm learning a whole new industry. Mm -hmm. All of us get the opportunity to learn about sports betting. That's not something I would have picked up had I not worked there. Mm -hmm. But I'm learning about sports betting. And we don't encourage people to bet the house. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was we going to talk to you that. that. So I wanted to ask you that. Jax also does a lot working with organizations like the Adams Board and others like that yes. in regards to trying to educate people right. on, we like are, you say, not betting the house. Yeah, we're required by law, but we take it a step further. It's called the responsible gaming. Mm -hmm. Every gaming institution has to have responsible gaming 
procedures in place. Mm -hmm. If we witness someone doing more gaming that they're comfortable doing, Mm -hmm. we have a conversation with them and we direct them into places where they can get help with that. If people decide, hey, today I bet too much, Mm -hmm. we have paperwork and procedures in place to say, okay, we won't allow you to game here anymore because that's your choice. Got you. That's excellent. And the one thing I think people are confused about is all of our employees, we're not allowed to game at Yeah, none Jack. of your places. At Jack. Oh, you know what? Let me guys one more question before I give you this camera to close us out. What if you are an ex-felon? Can I work at Jack? In certain position, yes. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're not going to put in a position where the money is. <laughs> right. We're just governed by many great rules. That our Ohio Commission is a great one. Mm-hmm. And so we would not put you, if you robbed a bank... Right. Logically, we're not going to give you a position handling any money, mm-hmm. but you may come in through, depending on what your felony was or your misdemeanor, we do have some available to re-entry individuals because we do believe that people deserve a second chance. That's correct. That's correct. Everybody needs to be able to be employed mm-hmm. and support their family. No, and that's true. So I would encourage people to look at our website and come in and apply. Oh, no problem. Well, Miss Catherine Hall, I want to thank you for coming on our pro- Destiny. Go on, you're fine. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. We, we can cut it. Yeah, go ahead. We, we, all right, we can edit this out. I got you. <laughs> she had to leave. She was trying to squeeze. You're going to knock the camera over, try to squeeze out. And you edit this. So yeah, I edit everything. So okay. we're fine. So uh, I want to talk. I want to let go ahead and let you end our program and give you an opportunity. I want to thank you for coming out to our program. Now I'm going to give you this camera because you have the clothes and you can say whatever you want. You want to talk something about what's going on at Jack's or you just want to leave an encouraging word. We're going to let you close our program. Okay. So I would love to thank Kim for having me out today. It was a pleasure being a part of this podcast and I encourage you to tune in and listen to more of them. I'm really fortunate to work for Jack Entertainment. As I'm learning more about the gaming industry, I would encourage you to learn more too. You are always welcome to visit us. And if you want to learn more about the sports betting that's coming along, download the Bet Jack app, play around with it. It doesn't cost you anything right now. And understand too the different career opportunities that we have at Jack. Jack is born here, raised here. We are an Ohio-based casino, and we take that very seriously. We want to be a great community citizen. You will find us actually volunteering in the community, supporting things in the community, recruiting people from the community, and trying to make a difference. We employ over a 1,000 people, and they are your community partners and citizens and neighbors. And it's just a great place to be either to work or to play. And you're always welcome there. The website is www.jackentertainment.com. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. All right.